Good afternoon. I am Andrea Chisholm with the Midday News. Special welcome if you're watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A reminder as well that you can watch TVJ Live by downloading our OneSpot Media app in the Google Play Store or the App Store. That's the number one, followed by the words Spot Media. New President of the People's National Party, Dr. Peter Phillips, was sworn in this morning as leader of the opposition. Dr. Phillips was sworn in by the Governor-General at a ceremony at King's House. This follows a letter from Leader of Opposition Business in the House of Representatives, Philip Paulwell, signaling support of all opposition MPs. The Constitution of Jamaica, read by His Excellency the Governor. We will be vigorous in defending those needs of the people for good governance, for good laws, for relief from anything that is oppressive or deleterious to their well-being. We will do so primarily through the parliament and through the exercise of those powers which our membership of the parliament uh, affords us. But equally, our voices will not be restricted to the parliament. A number of opposition MPs, including his predecessor, Portia Simpson Miller, witnessed the event. Dr. Phillips' elevation comes a little over a week after becoming People's National Party PNP president. Meanwhile, the local government minister addressed the ongoing debate about an increase in property taxes. Desmond McKenzie said if persons paid their property taxes, it will help the NSWMA buy more trucks to effectively carry out its mandate. We are not where we want to be and uh, based on the, the, the limited resources and with the, the oil and the cries and the concerns about property taxes, um, just to advise that with more property taxes, it means we can get more garbage trucks and it means we can uh, try to, to, to minimize <coughs> the effects of the uncollected garbage across the country. And the Cabinet is expected to review the new property tax regime today. This follows protests about massive increases some owners have experienced. Under the new regime, many persons will pay much more for property taxes. However, some people will pay the same, while others will pay less. In response, the government said it would consider if anything could be done about the taxes. Meanwhile, the row between the government and the opposition over the property tax regime is heading to the House of Representatives. Leader of Opposition Business in the lower house, Philip Powell, says the issue will be raised at Tuesday's sitting of the House. The opposition walked out of Parliament on March 22 after calling for the Andrew Holness administration to roll back its tax package. Meanwhile, Information Minister Senator Ruel Reed has cautioned that today's cabinet discussion is unlikely to result in a rollback of the tax. He says the discussion will likely cover the various avenues for persons to appeal the new charges. He adds that the government will be implementing a robust public education program to ensure those who cannot afford to pay their property taxes are aware of their options. The public should be informed of cabinet's position on the matter at a media briefing on Wednesday. The health ministry is considering placing a special consumption tax on sugary drinks. And that's because the chief medical officer, Dr. Winston Delahaye, says serious thought is being given to the tax. It's part of efforts to discourage the overconsumption of sweetened beverages. Dr. Delahaye adds that the Ministry of Health is in full support of the policy to tackle obesity in Jamaica. It's clearly established that these high sugary drinks are partly responsible for some of the problems that we see down the road in terms of children being overweight. Barbados, they have gone right ahead and implemented uh, increased taxation for these sugary drinks, appropriately so. So as we are headed as well, these are tried and proven methods of saving lives internationally. Uh, why shouldn't we do it? Um, we've proceeded with it. Tobacco taxation had another wave of that recently. It's the way to go. Uh, we must ensure that we make decisions which will ensure that we have a better quality of life for Jamaicans. Meanwhile, head of drink manufacturer with Singer William Mafood stated last week that there have been discussions with the government stakeholders about the matter. 
The country is expected to hear this week whether the ban on the importation of corned beef from Brazil will be lifted. A team comprising officials from the health ministry and the private sector visited Brazil in the wake of allegations that several major meat processors in the South American country have been selling rotten beef and poultry. The ministry will discuss the team's findings and determine whether to lift the ban which was imposed on March 21. There was a shooting near the Kingston Public Hospital this morning. According to police reports, a man drove up and opened fire. A man was also shot in his hand and a woman sustained bullet wounds. Lawyers representing the family of Mario Dean will be heading to court today regarding damages from the state more than two years after his death. Dean is a 32-year-old construction worker who was arrested on August 3, 2014 for possession of a ganja spliff. He died three days later after being beaten and stabbed at the Barnett Street lockup by other prisoners. Attorney Miguel Lorn told our news center that the Attorney General's Department has not filed a defense in the matter and the court will be asked to grant a default judgment. Against the Attorney General, who is representing the police and company, and that a date be set for the assessment of damages. What that means now, it would go before a judge who would hear the different arguments from both sides, hear witnesses, and decide the amount to be awarded to the Mario Dean estate. Meanwhile, Mr. Lawrence says Mario Dean's family is not happy with the pace of the court proceedings. He made mention of Mario's mother, Mercia Fraser, who has staged protests in an effort to keep Mario's memory alive. In fact, Miss Mercia Fraser is itching to continue her demonstration. But we have to tell her a whole strain a little because they, they just see a, a dragging out, dragging out. And um, th th this is a case which is drawing interest right around the world. So Jamaica justice system is on trial here. And um, it would suit us to move as quickly as possible. You know, getting dates in civil proceedings take very long in itself. So to delay it further would mean, um, you know, more travesty of justice. The Percy Juno Hospital in Manchester has received a refrigerator to safely store blood. The refrigerator, which costs over a million dollars, was donated by the Jamaica Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors and the Southern Regional Health Authority. They gave us a list and the list, um, from that list, we chose the blood uh, refrigerator. And um, we set about to gather the funds. This machine is built specifically to keep the blood at the absolutely correct temperature. This blood bank refrigerator that we have now can hold up to 60 units of blood. Currently with the refrigerator that we have we can hold maximum about 15 units of blood. Amidst growing concerns about infrequent garbage collection, six additional trucks have been added to the fleet of the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA. The trucks were handed over this morning at a ceremony. Details in this report. And we do apologize for that story. We'll return to it in a bit. Six out of every 1,000 children in Jamaica are in the, in the state of the care in the care of the state rather. This figure was revealed by Minister of Education Ruel Reed while speaking at a private sector organization of Jamaica PSOJ Residence Forum held recently. Mr. Reed provided an update on children who were cared for by the state. Of the number of children in care, 57% of our 2,623 are living in familiar settings supported by the agencies of the ministry foster care services, um, family re reintegration, and supervision order. Just over 800 families have opened their homes to children in the foster care system. The youth minister also spoke about children who live with relatives, although they are still being cared for by the state. 998 children are living in residential child care sectors supported by 47 children home and nine places of safety which the CDA operates a total of nine. 
In news overseas, the Russian Health Ministry is reporting that 11 people were killed in a blast on the St. Petersburg metro on Monday. The incident, which has been described as a terrorist attack, led to the shutdown of the entire metro system. More from the CNN. Uh, and Russian state prosecutors say this was an act of terror. State media says the explosion has killed at least 10 Chapter people, one. wounded at least 50. Now these are some of the first pictures from the scene. You can see the force of the explosion shredded that metal door there of the, of the car. All stations across the city were evacuated and are now closed. Now, this blast, this explosion, hit at the very center of downtown St. Petersburg, uh, the second largest city in Russia, just as President Vladimir Putin was speaking nearby on live television at a question and answer session. There's been an explosion in St. Petersburg metro, and there are casualties and fatalities. And I would like, at the beginning of our meeting, um, to express my condolences and regrets to relatives of those who died and suffered. I've spoken to uh, special services with, with director of FSB, FSB, law enforcement, and um, special services working and doing everything uh, to uh, find out the reasons of the accident, give a full assessment of what happened, and uh, city authorities and federal authority will take all necessary measures uh, to uh, provide support for families of those who uh, died and um, those who suffered injured. And in sports, Waterhouse are at least four points away from safety after a nil one nil win over Boystown, while Jamaica's first stint in the Red Stripe Premier League is on the brink of failure after losing to Humble Lion on Sunday. Waterhouse were on a two-game losing streak heading into their encounter at the Barbican Complex against the rampant and informed Boystown team, which had racked up four straight victories. Boystown helped in Waterhouse's rescue efforts last season as they were beaten on the last day of the competition, but the Admiral Bailey coached team were in no mood to surrender points to their rivals this time around. And it took only 13 minutes for Waterhouse to settle the issue as Kemar Beckford converted from the penalty spot. The visitors played more than an hour with 10 players as Andre McFarlane was red carded in the 27th minute. Waterhouse climbed up to 8th in the standings on 34 points, 5 ahead of the relegation zone with two games to play while Boystown dropped to 10th on 32 points. This is a big, big, giant step forward. I mean, it is not over by any shout, but this is a big, big, giant step um, um, going forward. Um, this is one of the games within the streak that we really didn't kick any shots at goal. With a man advantage, we got a lot of opportunities and we didn't put them away. And we just didn't apply ourselves in front of goal. Meanwhile, Jamalco are one defeat away from exiting the league after going down 2-1 to new leaders Humberland at Effortville. Gary McIntosh got a brace and that made the difference as Jamalco suffered their 20th league defeat to be in 11th place on 29 points with only two games and three points from safety. Reno secured top flight football for next season, clipping Tivoli Gardens 1-0 at Froome. St. Elizabeth technical schoolboy Demar James struck the winner seven minutes into the second half and condemned Tivoli Gardens to a third defeat in four outings. It's about the team's performance, our preparation was good coming into this game and it manifested itself in the game. The fact that we won the game 1-0, miss a, a, a penalty that would have just consolidated our position as it relates to the game itself, but it was a hard fought game. And that's the Midday News. I'm Andrea Chisholm. Join us for primetime news at 7. On behalf of our news sports and production teams, good afternoon.